9899 and this is it. Wow. This is the big one. This is 100. <laughs> All of you welcome in 100 shows, 100 times sitting right here. 100 times we've gone back and forth with one another. This is fantastic. It is how many? <laughs> it is one 100. Wow. <laughs> Thanks Holy guys for smokes. being with us for one 100 episodes. And we have Ben here, and uh, some people think that I don't get crazy. I think that just just proved that I could get a little bit on the other side of the fence. Yeah, you're a little wild. That's more than you have years of life. <laughs> uh, yes, that's just true. So, guys, uh, here we are. We're going to do the um, the bring up and tell us uh, how everything turned out episode. You've been waiting yeah, for this one for a long you, time. I have been. I really just want to hear back. <clears throat> Wait, I just lost my voice on that one. Yeah, you were really screaming. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I actually wanted to sing him a song, but... Let's see what you can come up with on the top of your head. Uh, I, I'll think about it, but right now we're going to roll on because it would be... Who knows? And... Uh, that's all you got? That's all I got. But meanwhile, I do want to hear all the updates because this is what we've really been waiting to do. And it's Christmas season 2023. Mm -hmm. We just finished Hanukkah. We're now getting ready for the Christmas event. And then, of course, we have everyone's birthday on New Year's, the New Year birthdays. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a really important thing. And I think Grandma's going to be 80. big 80. This is fantastic. So how time flies by. I remember when she was a young chicky. Chicky, oh, chicky. Man. Chicky. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. So uh, who's going to update us? Yeah. Who's on first? Who's up to bat? Justin's going to read first, but I just want to make sure everyone listening knows how much we appreciate them. The show would not exist without you guys writing in. And this episode especially wouldn't exist without your updates. So we just want to say we love you and thank you for all the support. It makes all the hard work we do so, so worth it, especially when we see all the comments on Instagram and we YouTube do. week after week. And um, I know last week we had a tough one with a single mom and the holiday season and seeing you guys show up week after week for other listeners is just so, so special for us. So we really love you guys and appreciate you so much. Yeah. And a big that was from a show called The Dating Game, by the way. Mm. You guys don't remember that, do you? No, I no. there was a serial killer that went on it, though. Really? My brother was also on it. He wasn't a serial killer, though. That's kind of random. But uh, he definitely was on it. He didn't wow. get picked. Wow. Poor guy. I mean, if you um, think of an average of five stories, we've done well over 500. Stories. 500 write-ins we've read. So, At least. Some episodes, we, you know, we get six. And Patreon. Patreon. Without further ado, shall let's, we get into it? Let's go. Okay. First up to bat on his new 20-year contract, making $489 million one year is the batter, Justin. Thunster. Oh, nice. All right, cool. I'd take that, that. You're paying me that? <laughs> no, I don't. If I had it, I'd give it to you. Okay. Uh, first update yeah. comes from episode 63, Father Knows Conflicting Feelings. It's from story number one at the 445 mark. All time codes we give on this episode are YouTube time codes, and they will be posted in the description so that you can go uh, review the original if you wish. This was from someone who was in the process of moving in with their best friend in a new city after their now ex-boyfriend betrayed their trust with a close friend of theirs. It's really short, so I think I could summarize it really quick. Go Do ahead. It. Okay, the original story, just really quick, was I, female 25, was dating my ex, male 27, for almost two and a half years, living together for over a year. There was one night where he was drinking with coworkers 45 minutes from our house, drank too much, and couldn't drive home. He said he was staying with his brother, however, turned his location off mm. and came home the next morning, yeah. claiming his location stopped working. Fast forward a month, he calls me crying, telling me he had spent the night at one of our best girlfriend's apartments. She lived alone, but claiming that nothing happened, he just slept on the couch. Mm. Sure. So 
that's kind of where we left okay. off. Okay. Wow. That was a juicy one. Here's the update. Hi, Jerry, Justin, Morgan, and Holly. No home at her mommy's. First off, I wanted to say thank you for taking the time to read my story and give me advice. It meant the world, and I honestly listened to it on repeat an embarrassing amount of times. On to the update. Well, I moved and can safely say, all caps, I am loving it. I have really branched out and rekindled old friendships lost during my relationship, made new friends, and have had so many amazing new experiences. That being said, I'm slightly here for more advice. Mm -hmm. I met a guy while out with friends, and let me say, he is amazing. We have been seeing each other for about two months so far, and I really see it going somewhere. We have met each other's friends, spent time trying new restaurants, seeing movies, walking around, etc. And it is just simple, easy, and fun. I love that. For the advice, how do you approach dating again after being betrayed by someone you loved? He has given me zero reason to feel insecure, but I am finding my intrusive thoughts creeping in. He's a really great guy, and I don't want to sabotage myself by letting my previous bad relationship affect me. Any thoughts would be greatly appreciated. I don't have many friends or family who have had a similar experience. Anyway, love you all. Well, that's amazing. Anybody want to go first? Um, I just think this is a great lesson of don't be scared to move on from something that's not working for you. I love this update and the fact that she broke up with him, took the risk, moved, reconnected. Like, This is such a great ending. It just demonstrates don't settle. Don't hold on to things that aren't serving you anymore. I I love this. As for addressing uh, the that insecurity and trying to trust again, what do you think? I think that you just don't let yourself get in your way, which I, which is the obvious. But you know, your screen is going to naturally pick up some of the um, the inconsistencies if they begin again. So if you see an inconsistency with this guy eventually, which you don't see right now, but you start seeing it, then you can be honest and just react to it and say, point blank, I see some you know, inconsistencies in a relationship. They're ringing some bells. Can we talk about it? Yeah. And he can, you, you can then, you have to use your own judgment and, and your radar to, to really make sure that you're accepting it because that's the problem when you, when you are betrayed. It knocks off your radar. It gets you out of being a sharp machine because every trigger, every hair in your body said, this is bad. And they're there telling you, nah, it's fine. It's golden. We're great. You know, you're, I don't know what you're reading into this thing, but you're way off base. So now your radar is out of calibration. So now you got your radar back in calibration. Hold on to that calibration. I mean, considering the fact that the original post, the original write-in said, I don't know how to get over being hurt and betrayed by two people who I love so much. And, you know, you're almost asking a similar question, but I don't think you realize how far you've come. So yeah, You've already done it. You're already well on your way. You have a bunch of new friends. You're seeing someone new. You already have made all the biggest steps. So I think patience mm-hmm. and just don't overthink it. Yeah. I've definitely been in relationships where there's been infidelity and it can be hard to instantly trust someone and, you know, hope they're not going to cheat on you and repeat those mistakes of your past partners. But I feel like with you, when it feels right and you give it time and you let yourself heal and you're with the right person, that relationship is going to feel so much more secure and that trust is going to be more inherent. And it does take time to heal. But something to remember is no two dogs are alike. No two people are alike. Everyone is so different. So don't hold the mistakes of past partners against a new one. Just take it at face value, how he's treating you, how he's making you feel. Yeah, your radar might be, you know, a little more sensitive. And like you said, it's it's okay to talk to him, mm-hmm. but just kind of let it flow. I think I think it'll it'll work out. He if sounds great. If there's something inconsistent, you're going to know it. You're going to feel it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, number two. Okay, this next one is from our episode we had last week, episode 99, Father Knows Holiday Antics. It was story number three at the 21 10-second mark. 
It was from our single mom living in a women's shelter with her five-year-old. I know a lot of you wrote in and helped in the comments, which was amazing. And I believe our writer even hopped in there as well and left a comment. So if you didn't hear that story, it was about a woman who is living in a shelter with her five-year-old. She is 23, got out of a bad relationship and then moved there, is studying currently to get her LPN, become a nurse, um, and yeah, just really struggling and doesn't didn't really know how to keep her mm-hmm. head up with the holidays and all of that approaching. Uh, so first, I was seriously shocked when I heard my story. I was sitting on the floor getting ready and cried. Haha. <laughs> but anyways, I had my final today and failed it. I've been so disappointed and my classmates were also so upset. They know I've seriously given it my all. But unfortunately, this month has really taken its toll on me. I heard so much encouragement from you all and it meant the absolute world. I'm trying hard not to look at this as a bad thing, but maybe time for me to get on my feet and get us a place. I can go back next year and take this class I failed over again. I don't want to give up. Also, I know people are wanting to donate to my little one, and I won't lie. Most of the time, I'm extremely stubborn and want to take things on on my own, but I will take any help I can get right now. I don't have a Venmo, but I have a cash app. Um, I will put the name of it in the description of the video. So there's some symbols. You guys will know how to spell it. I do ask for continued prayers because this really did break my heart. I hope you all have an amazing Christmas. We wish you a merry, amazing Christmas, an amazing holiday and Christmas as well. But most importantly, don't give up. Mm -mm. You know, the fact that you're being, you know, tenacious and you know you can go back next year and you know it's not the end of the world, that is a great place to begin. And sometimes, you know, look, I never forget biology. I failed the first time I went to summer school and I got an A, different teacher and a different experience. And it became one of my favorite topics. So you'll see what happens in, in, in the next time around. I guarantee you, you know, because you're committed, you're going to do much better and you'll find, you'll find the ways of getting through. Yeah. And I know someone who went to a four-year school for a bachelor's in nursing and failed her NCLEX exam or didn't pass um, over five times. So she did, she did finally get there and pass. Mm-hmm. You just keep, you keep grinding you know, you might struggle a little bit, but it does pay off. I mean, she she got an amazing job once she passed and is finally establishing herself in her life. And it's really great to see. And she could have given up. She could have thrown that all away and said, you know, fifth time, you think I would have gotten it. It's it's all a wash, but and she a, did it. And, and I do believe a going. lot. And I believe a lot of this is study groups. I don't know if you have are in a study group or if you have to do some adjustments to find, you know, one that works for you a little differently. And you guys can help each other understand things and grasp that information uh, better. That that also helps. Yeah. And the thing I really love about this update is just the different energy you get from it. Mm-hmm. Before it, uh, the original write-in was kind of almost just losing hope. Mm-hmm. And this I get so much hope from. Mm-hmm. You can just feel it in the writing. I think if you ever have those low moments again where you're just at the brink of giving up go back and and either listen to that episode or go read all those comments because it is real there's people here for you everyone wants to see you succeed and do really well and we're all we're all here so i think it's just i it's just so powerful i i really love the mechanism that's been put in place with this yeah Yeah. it really is fantastic okay number three number three So we have not been able to locate this story yet. I'm hoping you guys can tell us what episode it's in. It sounds so familiar, but every time we go to try to find where it came from, we can't. And And there's a hundred (laughs) episodes. Yeah. And um, you used a different email when you shared your update. So we couldn't even use that in our our forms that we keep. Yeah. But it is a really good story. It was um, it was from a writer who had a very traumatic birth with her daughter and the fiance wasn't helping with the baby. She was exhausted from the 24-7 childcare. Talking wasn't working. And he dropped the ball on her birthday. If it rings a bell to anyone, please let us know. So for the update. Hi, everyone. I sounded so dramatic and young in my original write-in. Definitely could tell my age and exhaustion from the newborn phase. For context, we are both 21 now and our girl is almost two which is crazy to wrap my head around. On to the update. My health is a lot better. 
ended up with some permanent conditions from the complications in pregnancy and lack of proper care after, but I'm managing it all a lot better and am out from under the postpartum depression cloud. As for my relationship, it took us breaking up for him to become the best father I've ever seen. We fought constantly and decided we liked each other better as friends, and that has been the best thing for us. We are great at co-parenting and still go on parent days out together, both able to put our daughter first. He is now the best father to our girl and loves her unconditionally. We have 50-50 custody and are both in a much better headspace. As for family, because you asked about if I could get support from my family, my family all lives out of state and I'm still living in the same town with him and his family. His mom and I have wine nights together now and I've adopted her and his brother as my family and I'm closer to them than my own. Wasn't always the case, but funny how things work out. Thank you for the advice. It was amazing to hear and reaffirmed my belief that I needed help. I really appreciated hearing everything from your point of views. Wow. Huge change. Yes. Huge change. You can hear them. You can hear the changes in all these. Yeah. Yeah. And just the sense of hope and happiness. And sometimes it's just that little push from uh, someone completely unrelated, some third party like us, just to say, hey, keep going. Or, hey, maybe try this. And a little time. And it's like a little push. And a little time. Yeah. A little time and, and and a little allowing, a little allowance and things really grow. Yeah really does. And it even says in there, it's funny how things just work out sometimes. It's all meant to be. Life is life is weird and it tests us and it puts us in bad situations. But I believe if you keep trucking, you're going to come out the other side better. And there's, there's a lot it's of called there. growth. Yeah. It's growth. This is really good though. I think this is a great example of um, like sometimes you just don't work out, but it's best for your kids to split. Like I know a lot of people stay in relationships for their kids. Mm-hmm. And I think this is a great example that sometimes it's better to parent apart. And, and look and look how their relationship is. Yeah. It's better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This was great. Take Thank all, you. Take all the muck out and just get back get back to normal. And yeah. things really to work themselves. They took out. all the pressure away. Mm-hmm. And now they can just be great co-parents. Mm-hmm. It's great. Magical. Okay. Number, Number four. four. Passing it. Passing it back to Justin. One of this week's partners is HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Have you found yourself cooking the same things over and over for weeks? Well, HelloFresh has more options than ever before. Dig into their biggest menu yet with over 45 dinner options to choose from weekly and even more market add-on items that suit any lifestyle. Sometimes it can be really hard to eat healthy with limited time. And especially this time of year, everyone's looking to revamp their eating habits. Look to HelloFresh's wholesome, health-forward options like over 30 calorie-smart and protein-smart recipes each week. We love HelloFresh. We've had a variety of recipes from them, and they've all been great. The recipes are easy and fast, and we love all cooking them together. And the best part, especially on episode days, is it saves us so much time. So if you're ready to try it for yourself, go to HelloFresh.com slash FKS free and use code FKS free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash FKS free with code FKS free. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. This is from episode 41, a long time ago. Wow. 60 episodes ago. Holy smokes. (laughs) Father Knows Black Sheep. Oh, I love the Black Sheep theme. Story number three, 21 minutes and 49 seconds. Here's the little uh, short summary that they provided. My mom would get angry and have violent outbursts from it, causing me to be scared of upsetting people. When we were young, me and my brothers didn't get much food, so my brother stole food. He got punished for it and now doesn't really eat due to being punished for trying to eat. Jared, one of my brothers, moved out of the state to escape. I was worried about my baby brother. First, I want to say thank you so much for answering. I really appreciated it. This was the final push I needed to start therapy and have been in therapy since December of 2022. 
My brother Jared actually moved back at the end of August. Shortly after that, my mom asked to talk to me and him because she wanted to know why him and I were so distant with her because my baby brother, Lynn, was starting to get very distant and wouldn't say I love you to her. She wanted to know how to stop it from getting worse with Lynn. Jared and I both told her what happened and what the results were, my extreme people-pleasing to my own detriment and Jared's eating issues. She seems to understand, though for a long time she stood her ground on not apologizing. However, my grandmother helped me to convince her to start therapy as well. During her therapy, she realized how much some of the things she did damaged me and my brother's and has apologized for a lot of it. Wow. She has gotten so much better in regards to her anger issues and respecting Lynn's space and boundaries. I am thinking of asking her and my brothers if maybe we could do some family therapy as we all still want to be a family and have good relationships, so I think it could really help. However, I don't think Jared is ready for this as he still has some work to do for himself first. Thank you again so much because hearing your feedback has directly led to me and my mom getting therapy and our relationship getting better. Also, extra thank you to Morgan for telling me about the psychologytoday.com as it was where I found my therapist yeah, and where a few yeah. other people in my family were able to find therapists as well. So thank you very much. Mom, good cry. This is fantastic. It goes to show you how you can have dysfunction in a family. And one person can start by getting everybody else to actually bring the family into a, a full, harmonious, true Im- relation where you guys can embellish. You guys can, I'm, I'm using the word embellish, but it's the wrong word, where, where you guys can come as part of a family unit and grow together. Yeah, this and, is amazing. And get, get out of that bad circle where it goes for generations. Yeah, by, you broke the cycle. Yep. That is correct. You're breaking the cycle. Yeah. And getting the family back on a really good track for growth for your next generation. Absolutely. I think this just goes to show how amazing therapy can be. Mm -hmm. I think everyone should go out there and try it. And if it's not right the first time, find a good provider that does fit you. And um, to plug Psychology Today again, you can go on there, type in your insurance, type in where you are. There's real reviews from people. Um, ZocDoc is also amazing and we Mm -hmm. love them, but try it. I think, you know, we're coming up on a new year and look at how amazing it can be, how much positive impact it can have on not just you, but your whole family. So That's right. So all of you that have families that have a little dysfunction where it's, it's not functionable, this is a way to really say we can start the new year and really have a great year and don't have to continue on year after year in this bad cycles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. It's just so full circle. Thanks for sharing that story. It's, yeah, thank you. It's fantastic. What number are we on? I think this is going to be five. Should we go back to spooky season? Yeah. Sure. Our most popular episode. Episode 92. Give us a spook. Father knows spooky stories. Give us a spooky story. Story number four. Okay. And it was at the 29, 15 second mark. The short little summary is my husband's grandmother told me she was going to die in a dream before she actually died. Remember this? Mm -hmm. Sandy, she thought her name was. Sorry, Morgan. I didn't want to make my story too long, so I didn't add this in. Oh, no. (laughs) But you're really interested, and I don't want to leave you hanging. I knew my grandpa was going to die. I might have misspelled on that last story. This is about my grandpas. Yes, multiple. My great-grandpa on my mother's side, mom's dad's dad. I was somewhere between 8 and 10 years old. I had met my great-grandpa maybe two times. I was not close with that side at all. I was dreaming, and in my dream, I woke up. I walked out of my bedroom and to the hallway in the house I was living in at the time. In the hallway, in front of the bathroom, my great-grandpa was on a hospital bed, laying dead, and he was facing the wall. I couldn't see his face. My grandpa, his son, was leaned over him, crying, saying, I love you, Dad. I'm so sorry. I'm going to miss you. The dead grandpa rolls over and mouths, I love you too, son. I almost collapse in my dream and walk backwards into my brother's room to find my baby sister laying on a hospital bed, and she says, did you see grandpa too? Then I actually woke up. 
I kind of think the hospital bed and my sister was a prediction of today. She's in and out of the hospital because doctors can't diagnose what is wrong with her. Anywho, I didn't get that gut feeling, but about a year or two later, my great-grandpa went to visit my grandpa. While at his house, my great-grandpa stood up and walked through the hall to the bathroom. He didn't make it to the bathroom before he collapsed and suddenly died. My grandpa, from the way I remember the story being told, ran over to him and was holding him as he fully passed, saying he loves him. Now, from my maternal grandpa's death, he died about a year ago on April 30th. I had no dream this time, but for weeks leading up to his death, I got that awful gut feeling. This feeling told me exactly who was going to go. I don't really know how I can read gut feelings one time and can't fully the other. But this time, I felt it was going to be my grandpa. Side note, Justin explained it perfectly. It's a gut feeling, not just a bad feeling, but a feeling of, I know this is happening and I know it will be death. Anyway, I was telling my husband about it almost every day leading up to it. He brushed it off, said it was my anxiety, and told me everything will be okay. Suddenly, a day came where I didn't have the feeling and I didn't feel sad. So my husband and I went on a date, had a great day until about 2 p.m. when I got the call. My grandpa had suddenly died. He had a seizure while he was eating and choked on his food. So that's the story of both my grandpas and how I knew they would go. Also, I want to note, I do not intentionally open myself or go in search for answers for the other side. I honestly hate this curse, gift, whatever it is. Death predictions suddenly come to me. I see ghosts, feel presences, you name it. Anyway, I hope this story doesn't spook you guys too much. So Morgan, I really hope you aren't reading this alone in your room at 3 (laughs) a.m. Because I have a feeling you'll get creeped out. Lots of love for you all. I literally got the chills. I'm like sitting over here just rubbing the chills away. Brought the spooky back. Yeah, well, wow. You have the gift. There is, the, is This is not a curse. It is a gift. And, you know, the, the I don't know if you call them mentalists. What is the right word for uh, what the Sylvia Browns of the world are? Well, we had some people write in that Sylvia Brown was a con artist. I don't believe that. But that's okay. They no, can. there's, I mean, there's documented proof that um, she went on some show and was talking about a like girl that went missing and mm-hmm. told the mom, oh, she's dead. She's dead. The girl actually was found alive. not dead, alive. Alive. So eh, take it, take it as you will. You know, like I said, it's a, if, if you haven't, t- if you're a spiritualist, is it a spiritualist? I would say spiritualist. If you're a spiritualist and you have a gift that you can, hear from the other side or reach the other side more and the door is more open for you than other people. It's a gift. Simple. Yeah. I would say maybe there's a way to work with another person who's more in tune and figure out like how to harness it. So it doesn't leave you. So, Mm -hmm. but wow, that's intense. Very intense. Thank you for sharing. I was going to wonder forever. (laughs) I don't have the willies. (laughs) The willies. I don't get the willies from that. I actually think it's a blessing and I and I fully believe in it. Okay. What number? The score, we're rolling on six. Okay, let's roll. You just hope you're not the not the one on the the other end of that. I I don't hope for or against. I, I go with life and whatever life is going to bring, it it brings. I don't worry about it. I live every day to the fullest and live every day that it's almost your last. So you got it. There's no regrets. Gotta roll on number six. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of a bonus for everyone. This was a story we actually responded to on Patreon back in August. So we are sharing the link in the description for this episode. It's free. We're letting you add it uh, to kind of summarize for you guys. The original write-in was from a 21-year-old female. She felt that she had a good life with great people in it, but just felt really lost was going to university for a bachelor's degree in translation and signed up for a lot of courses and just felt like there was too much on her plate and was going to move on to then getting her master's, had a long-distance relationship of three years, closest friends are at home, and she goes back every weekend, eight hours of traveling in total. I remember that. Wanted her degree, wanted to do the job, but also wanted to go back home with family and friends. 
felt like she was tearing herself apart to do everything. And so we gave some advice. I remember this. Update to I am losing myself. I, now 22 female, wrote in last year to get some advice on me balancing my life and having too much on my plate. It was featured on Patreon. Here's a link. I listened to your advice and can report back that I am much happier in my life. I did finish my bachelor's degree and I'm starting my master's next semester. I graduated with good grades and got accepted into my master's immediately after applying. What led me to be able to handle all of what was on my plate was following your advice. I changed my diet completely, don't drink any alcohol at all anymore, and I took on a job and a new hobby. I desperately wanted to pick up an old hobby of mine, Taekwondo. I did it since I was seven years old, but thought I wouldn't have the time. Boy, was I wrong. It gave me so much balance in my life and made my stay at the new city so much more enjoyable and led to me finding new friends with the same interests as me. I am still with my boyfriend, four years now, and did still go home every weekend since he can't afford to visit me. However, I went by public transport, which allowed me to spend those 32 hours a month still doing work for school. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I would also just listen to this podcast on the train and wind down as well. I am happy and content, although the same problem will remain in my master's since the courses are on weekends as well, which leaves me with no time to go home, and my boyfriend seems to be unwilling to come here since he would be alone in my tiny dorm room half of the weekend and money is still tight as he just does some tutoring when uni allows him to. That is something that gives me anxiety still, but I am mostly looking forward to this new adventure ahead with my master's in a new field of study. Fantastic. Balance. Balance. Yeah. Balance. Oh, and Taekwondo so absolutely will bring will help you bring balance in your life. It's, very, it, yeah. It, it's it's very more cool. it's more than just physical, it's very mental. Well, I feel For like sure. we've ha we've responded to a number of stories that are similar where we're like, find a new hobby. That hobby will lead to new friends. And you can start to really branch out and, mm -hmm. and take root in this new city. And I love that it comes back. And I went back to an old hobby. I felt like I didn't have time for it, but it's just enhanced my life greatly. Mm -hmm. It's great. An old friend. Yeah. <laughs> that, old, that hobby is an old friend and a true friend. Just like Morgan getting back on the ponies. I know. There's nothing like doing something you love. I think it's such a better mental health balance, let alone work life. But like your head, just like it does something to your brain mm -hmm. doing something you love, clearly. And you need so, your space and you need to go. Yeah. You need to have your passion. Yeah. You and definitely need it. Yeah, I think this will be good. And you guys have been making long distance work. It's, you know, a master's program goes by so fast and then you can live wherever you want. Well, and it'll sort itself out. I it mean, will. It, you've seen that all of, even I would say trickier things have sorted themselves out thus far. Mm -hmm. So just, just I love, keep, I love hearing on. these. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Love that. Thank you for sharing. Okay. So this next one is coming from episode 48, which was Mama Drama Part Two. Classic. It was the first story, which started around the two minute, 35 second mark. Link is in the description. So the original problem was, she said, I'm in some dire need of advice <laughs> because I have nowhere to turn at this point. I'll cut right to the chase. My stepmom and I have never gotten along. She's always been a major bitch to me and I've treated her the same. They went to go see her grandparents who live all the way across the country. While visiting grandparents, they were all at a bookstore. And when she was standing next to her dad, all of a sudden she heard really gross kissing noises. And I kid you not, this girl had her tongue shoved down my dad's throat. I was disgusted. Naturally said, ew, gross. Um, they ended up proceeding to finish up the trip, but our writer got COVID. And so had to stay with their dad and his wife for another five days. Mm -hmm. During those five days, stepmom and her were civil, but just not, you know, not doing too great. Um, it got to the end and stepmom finally was like, when are you leaving? And our writer goes, the next day. And stepmom goes, I would prefer it if you left today. I remember that. Dad looks around, gives our writer a what the fuck kind of face. That's how they put it. Uh, they got up, texted mom to come get them, standing by the front door. 
Stepmom then proceeds to run her mouth saying I'm disrespectful and that I was supposed to leave yesterday, but my dad never told me I had to leave. So I went up and asked her, what the fuck is your problem with me? And she was so incredibly hurt by the comment I made about her and my dad kissing. And so there's some other tea, but we'll let you guys go back and watch it if you haven't heard it. Uh, ideal outcome was I just want to be civil to the point where they don't mind standing in the same room together. How do I talk to her when there's nothing to talk about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And here's the update. Okay. Hello, Jerry, Justin, Morgan, Holly, and whoever else may be there. First off, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to read my submission. Hearing it out loud, I couldn't believe how immature I sounded. But that's beside the point. I really took what you and Justin said to heart, as well as some YouTube comments that really made me feel better about the situation. Some people in the comment section were saying how my stepmom doesn't seem to like how she's not the only woman in his life. And if I'm being honest, I've heard that many, many, many times, but never took it that seriously until unbiased people started saying the same thing. So thank you to the people in the YouTube comment <laughs> section. I feel like I should add a bit more info from my past story. My stepmom was actually the home wrecker and was the cause of my parents' divorce, as well as my dad cheating multiple times. I believe nine or 10 when all of this happened, and she even tried convincing my dad to leave me and my older brother. So naturally, I don't really like her. Now on to the update, officially. Good news. My dad didn't cut me out of his life like Jerry said he wouldn't. However, my stepmom and I were supposed to talk about what happened, but then her dad, my papa, unfortunately passed away, and she was in no mood or mental space to talk about our fight. Mm -hmm. Understandably. I just decided to support her quietly as she mourned the loss of her father. We did get a bit better after that. I know we still have a while to go for us to be good again, but for now, I can confidently say we are civil with one another. My dad and her were actually in the area of where I go to school and decided to come by and say hi for an hour or two, and we got along great. I think as long as we aren't with each other over a long period of time, we are fine with each other, lol. Thank you again, everyone, so much. You have no idea how much I appreciated your advice. I think this is great. Yeah. And the fact that she was able to reflect even on her own behavior, which yeah, which brings up which which enables growth. A hundred percent. Period. And so, the ideal outcome became the outcome. That's mm -hmm. right. She's able to tolerate and get along, and yeah. they they can actually, you know, you know, visit each other. Well, and it kind of seems like a common thread, even just through these updates, is when you have this long running conflict with someone that isn't necessarily like, you know, you did the most horrible, awful thing to me that could never be forgivable. Mm -hmm. And it, it's honestly something so simple sometimes where it's like one little fight or one disagreement and just gets blown up into this lifelong conflict. We, wa I, we watch that every day. We watch it here. But the thing is with that, it's so much harder to keep being angry and keep that conflict going your whole life mm -hmm. versus how much better does it feel when you both can be like, all right, let's put the swords away and actually slowly, but like try to make this a more positive thing for the both of us mm -hmm. because neither of us need that for a lifelong mm -hmm. thing. You know, it's like, it's so much nicer when, Everyone comes together so and it well, doesn't have to be, you don't have to hug and kiss and be lovey dovey people. And oh my God, I'm so thankful for you. But you, you know, you're civil and it can just keep getting a little bit better every so day. Well, so well said. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely people and it's something I've had to come to terms with. Like there's people that are in my life that I don't like. It just like, they're not my cup of tea. And I think some people are just water and oil and they're just not ever going to get along. But you have to just like almost let that go. They're not going to be my person, but that's fine. But I can still be civil. I can still be in a room with them. It just like it takes this mental growth to get to that point. And once you do, it does feel a lot better. It doesn't feel like it's nails on a chalkboard being around them as much. Mm -hmm. And that can take a lot out of out of you when you're dealing with someone like this that you have so much negative context with and history and it's it's good you're getting to a point where you're just like, I got it. It's cool. I'm gonna be civil. Yeah. And you you know you realize we all have our 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 battles and our stuff. Like she lost her dad, 
terrible to go through, but you're being very mature. And like you guys said, yeah, it's amazing you were able to recognize even that from your initial write-in. And it takes hearing stuff out loud sometimes to realize how how we sound. So yeah, thank you for posting and keeping us updated. We're rolling on number eight. We're rolling. Eight, eight, eight. We are a steam. We are a steam engine. I gotta read it a little bit. Well, he looks at that. I'm gonna look at my my New Year socks, my holiday socks, and I have champagne and I have wine and all kind of. But you know what I don't have? No holes. Oh, wow. look at that. No holes. Wow, shocking, <laughs> honestly. Quite shocking. I, I thought you I thought you'd like that. You know, we were in Las Vegas last weekend and we were walking through one of the malls and we saw a sock store. Really expensive sock. And I wanted to go in there and just, you know, just roll in the socks and Morgan says, You can't go do that. Socks are getting so expensive. Like, even to buy the cute fun ones, they're expensive. I bought a pack of six from like a normal brand instead of TJ Maxx. Mm-hmm. So expensive. I literally am would only- you pay, Would you pay a pair of socks? It was so stupid. It was like $12 for two. Six dumb. bucks a pair. Dumb. So I only buy my socks from TJ Maxx usually. And that is what I will continue to do. And what socks do you have on tonight? I'm wearing like my little Ugg booties that I got I, at I saw, Nordstrom Rack. Which Justin has socks on. I saw something going on his feet. Yeah. He has Mickey Mouse. He's got some fun socks from Bombas, special Bombas. Mickey edition. Okay. I think I can summarize this. Let's go. Uh, without struggling too much. Let's do it. This is from episode 51. Wow. From Father Knows Realistic Expectations, story number two at 17 and 56 seconds. Hi, FKS fam. I want to first thank you for reading my original story and for all the advice you gave me. My original story was about my 25 female struggle with setting boundaries surrounding my partner's 24 male mom. She had just lost her husband to COVID and she had already had issues with alcohol abuse before this, but it only got worse. She would lash out at my partner and his brother, then act like nothing happened in a vicious cycle. She had also just started dating a man I'll call him F, that we all felt a little off about. Yep, I remember. After many months of seeing the way she spoke to and treated my partner and his brother, I was struggling with how to set my own personal boundaries while still supporting him. To the update. Yeah. It's been a year since I originally wrote this story, and I'm so glad y'all started this update form. I played this episode for my partner, who was extremely open-minded and understanding and hearing a third party's advice was super helpful. He completely respected my boundaries, and between this episode and me constantly building up his confidence, he began to draw more boundaries with his mom too. He made sure our relationship was the priority and that his mom wasn't creating any tension between us. Now for the slightly bad part. Things got worse before they got better. His mom kept drinking, kept spending money, and kept dating the same man, F for a while. We met F once and we knew things were kind of off. F eventually moved in with her and we knew she was supporting him financially. A couple months later, she called my partner to tell him that she and F got into an argument and he hit her. We later found out this wasn't the first time F had hit her and even then she still had trouble cutting him off. But this is where things get better. I'm not sure what happened, if everything with F caused a breakthrough, but there was this sudden change in her. She made sure F was gone from her house and her life, got a new phone and blocked F's number, started going to church more, started going to therapy, and stopped drinking. Ah! All on her own. No specific encouragement from my partner or his brother. She began looking out for herself and prioritizing her own mental health. Now, months later, she's never seen better. She still doesn't drink and only takes edibles to help her sleep. She gets together with her mom and siblings regularly and calls my partner and his brother often to check on them. They no longer dread talking to her or having her visit, and they all constantly text in our family group chat. Side note, since the financial aspect was a big part of my original story, I'm happy to say that my partner's brother is still thriving in college and he has a part-time job where he was recently promoted. Anyway, I just wanted to emphasize how important it is to prioritize yourself 
and your mental health over all else. It's all you can control and sometimes it inspires those around you to do the same and make positive changes. I'm also happy to say that my partner and I are getting married in the spring Ah! and no one could be more excited than his mom. I feel so lucky to call these wonderful people my family. Again, thank you all for your advice and I can't wait to keep listening for years to come. This is so great. Growth. Uh. Again, growth. I mean, God, like it was so, I remember this one and then the brother was thinking about dropping out of school and something like that to help the mom. And it was getting dark. Yeah, It was so bad. And to just see so much positive change and oh, just wow. And she did it for herself. Like, yep. I think sometimes you do have to let as hard as it is to watch the people we love do this. You have to kind of let them hit rock bottom and pull themselves up by their bootstraps, whatever that saying is. Because yep. she did Something it. Something like that, yeah. She did it herself. And wow, how amazing. Very pleased. Yeah. Thank you for updating us. I'm so excited yeah. for you. Congratulations. Okay. Your we wedding's coming up a couple months, spring. <laughs> so you're not the only ones getting married, getting engaged. Yeah, I know. We don't have a date yet, though. <laughs> uh, I think this will Oops. be rolling the 9-9. Nine -nine. I'm going to keep pushing you guys so we can keep going. <laughs> nine. So, yeah, this is all we got. So, oh, you friends. Got what, what, isn't there what, I, is, I have one more. Okay. But if you're listening and you guys have had your story read and you haven't given us an update yet, the link is in the description of the, the audio version, the video version. Separate form, so it says update form. Let us know your updates because this is this has been a really nice time reading all. It's been these. great. It really inspires us and goes to show us that we really do help some of the people and and yeah, and doing this is worth every penny of it. Yeah, and yeah, this is. I mean, this was the original mm -hmm. mission of this show. Absolutely. This is it, just to help people. Yeah. yeah, and even if your update isn't as positive and happy as some of these, we want to hear it. Maybe. Maybe there's something new that's happened that you could benefit getting advice from. Yeah, we can talk us about it. Or the YouTube comments because mm -hmm. people show up in the comments. So still update us right on in. Update your family. Yeah. yeah. Let us know how you're doing. Okay. So the last one we okay. have. I'm here. I'm, I'm, I've am i been, been quiet in this chair, just drinking it in. <laughs> This is coming from episode 73, Father Knows Hard Places. It was story number five, 51 minute, 58 second mark. Uh, so trigger warning on this one. It does contain mentions of suicide. Uh, the title that our listener gave us on this one was, my bio father committed suicide and I needed advice on how to ask my mom for his note. I remember, I remember that this, one like yeah. it was yesterday. And again, link to listen to the original is in the description. I don't want to get too much into it just in case um, there are people out there that can't listen to that. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for your advice. I really took everything you said to heart and thought a lot about it. It's been several months since the episode and a lot has happened since. After listening to everything you all said, I decided to just go straight to the authorities and then discuss what I learned with my mom. I called the county coroner where Mark died shortly after the episode to see if they had records of his death and the note. Unfortunately, they didn't really have anything. The person who was the coroner at the time did not provide detailed records, so I didn't get anything outside of what I already knew. Mark's death date and how he died, etc. That was already stressful, but then my great-grandpa died. Even though we all saw it coming, he was 100, it was really hard for us all since we were really close to him. There was a whole lot of crap I won't get into going on at the time, so I kind of put the Mark thing on hold for a while. But even though I wasn't looking into his death, I was still really in the feels about him. My family has let me keep all of the home videos my grandpa had at his house. I plan on digitizing them at some point so other loved ones can have what they want. Mark was in a few of them. So, after I finally figured out how to get a VCR working, I watched some of the videos. It was great seeing him and other loved ones I lost being alive and themselves. It motivated me to try again with seeing if I could find another way to get Mark's note. I finally came back to it about two weeks ago, two months after I first called the coroner. This time, I tried calling the county Mark lived in 
to see if they had any information. It took a lot for me to ask them, so I was super disappointed when they said they had nothing. Since Mark didn't die in that county, they don't have any records regarding his death. So now, all roads lead to mom. Again, right now she's still grieving my great-grandpa, which I 1,000% understand because I am too. So it's just not a good time to bring up the subject of Mark's letter. In some ways, I found something just as good though. Some of the tapes are from when I was a baby, back when Mark was alive. There's videos of him holding me and talking. Well, I'm gonna cry. I always, all caps, have wanted to know what his voice sounded like, and so this was amazing. But what was even better is that in one clip, he says my name and is excited and playing with baby me on the floor. This sounds so small, but for me, this was huge. For years, Mark was just a picture in a frame or a person from someone else's memory. But with the videos, I get to see him as a person. And even if I can't remember being loved by him, I can see it, not just hear that he loved me from someone else and take their word for it. I don't know when I'll ask my mom again about the note, and I don't know when she will finally give in and let me read it. For now, though, the home videos have been a big step in handling my grief over my grandpa and answering my lifelong questions about Mark. And it also helps me further reconcile the longing I have for him with the love I have for my dad and how our family is. If I do ever get to read the note, maybe I'll be able to write in with that update. Until then, thank you for all the support and encouragement. Good story. Wow. It's not an episode without me crying once, That's right? True. That is true. Wow. Well, it touched nerves. It touched parts of your life. It's just, it's, it's heavy. It's heavy and you, you feel for a writer and to try so hard and not, you know, not get those answers by not approaching her mom. It's, it's. It's so really tough. She went to the coroner, but did she go? Just, to, did she go to the police? Or don't isn't there a police file typically? I'm not sure. I think sometimes because there's such extensive records, if it is ruled no foul play or suicide, I I think they can get rid of those files sooner. But also, it was interesting. They called the county and they said he didn't die in that county. So maybe find out what county it was and call. But you know, you might be getting to a point because of these videos mm -hmm. that doesn't even matter. You know, maybe you're there, maybe you're not. But having those videos is so remarkable and something I think we need to start doing more That's of. That's what I wanted you to bring up with this. Is literally get your stuff off your phones and start recording more. Record your partner with your kids playing. And if you're a mom, make sure your partner is recording you because... So many times it's the mom getting the cute photos and the cute videos of the kids and their dad or the other parent. And a lot of times the moms get forgotten about. So get a tripod, set it up if you don't have a partner willing to take stuff of you. And if he's not willing, throw him away. But take the videos and get them off your devices. Well, and what you're doing with your grandma. Yeah. I'm really, really big on creating kind of like a little capstone um, capsule kind of things. And so with my grandma, I recorded us doing like kind of a podcast type thing, asking her questions about her life, her favorite memories. I've given her journals that prompt her with questions to write in. Uh, my grandma's a baker. Our thing that we love doing together is baking. So what I did is I bought a blank recipe book and I gave that to her and I, I've I kind of I kind of pound her for it. I'm like, did you put this recipe in there every time she makes something? But she's loved it. And it's it's really shown how much I engage with her and how much I care because, you know, we're it's we're working on something together. And so she's built this recipe book with all of our family recipes yeah. or favorite ones we've tried. And it's beautiful to create those pieces and those heirlooms that you're gonna have forever. And they also have, I've, I've watched, I've, I don't know where I've seen it, but I know it's out there. Uh, for your cell phones, there's like a tripod a motor drive that it will literally follow, follow you. Yeah. It will follow you around the room. So you can actually be in a kitchen with grandma and it, the artificial intelligence of this thing will yeah. 
you know, just do all kinds of stuff. That's cool. And it's like really having a cameraman on site. <laughs> right. Cause yeah. you don't have to necessarily be there filming, being distracted on your phone. No. You set just it set it up because one day you will cherish that. Mm -hmm. Or one day, grandkid, great grandkid who never got to meet this person. Right. Could get a sense of who they were. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's what's so cool about what you're doing. I think that's what's cool about the little baking competitions we're starting with. I know. Her. We started doing bread bake offs. And I even think about it in my own life. Like it took me buying this super special piece of property from my grandpa up north. Because of that process, I ended up talking to him once a week for a year straight. Mm -hmm. And we're probably the closest we've ever been. Mm -hmm. Just simply, I mean, you know, it, it took that to do it. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you can let relationships just kind of slip away or you can drift away from your grandparents. It's, oh, see you on holidays and but whatever. You, but you have a common interest now together. But it's like, once you start having those again, it's so awesome. It's mm -hmm. so amazing because you came from them. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's it's bound to be really like awesome and hear all the stories about, hear things about your parents you never knew yeah. and all this stuff. And I think the more you can capture that too. Like it's I've been so setting important. the camera down when we're up there. Mm -hmm. And just letting it sit and recording our time up there. I, I, I love the fact that she told the story that she saw a picture of him, beautiful. her on the floor and him playing. Yes. With, and she could see the love. No different. I have a, on my phone, I keep a video of you and your brother first day of school. I know. Well, you are uh, hearing this too. You have all of our home videos here. You were supposed to digitize them. I got them all. And it's, I think it's time we do that. And we do have a partner that I actually love. Um, it's Skylight Frames. I think it's such an easy way to get pictures off your iPhone or Android. It's a beautiful frame. You set it up on a shelf or wherever you want in your home. You can send a shit ton of pictures to it. It's, yep. you know, you and your partner or kids or whoever can send pictures and you keep adding together as a family. And mm -hmm. there's them. Um, I know a lot of people have been starting to do like hard photo printed books from like Shutterfly. There's new video ones where you can send in a bunch of your videos and it gets put in a book that you open the book and it automatically starts playing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Start, there's things out there. Start getting table all books. of your stuff table off books of Table books of phones. the family growing. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's so sad because my mom, my mom had a disposable camera all the time and we have boxes at home full of actual printed photos mm -hmm. and photo books. And we don't have that anymore. We take all these photos and then we don't share them or we don't even look at them Scan again. Scan them. Scan. Yeah, do something with them. Yep. Because it's so important for your kids to, or anyone, you even, to see all of those things and look at look at what it can give. Like, this is so beautiful that- I love it. They had that. Oh, amazing. Well, thank you guys for 100. Well, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Thanks so much for um, joining us for the 100. Yeah, and before we end, I just want to, Justin put this whole episode together. Justin's the one that found all these updates, went through the YouTubes, found the timestamps, the links. So thank you so much for putting this together. And look at that smile. Look at those dimples he's got in the side of his cheek. <laughs> yes. Well, thanks everybody. You guys and you guys out there. So let's um, roll on and we'll look start all new for the next, the next hundred. Yeah. Okay. Good night. Bye. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.